Welcome to After Hours with Dr. Sigalov, where he can share ideas and thoughts with you. He gets to the heart of the issue so that you can find the truth. The views and opinions expressed are his and do not represent the U.S. Army, DOD, nor the U.S. government. Dr. Sigalov was either off duty or on approved leave, and Dr. Sigalov was not in uniform at the time of recording. Now, to Dr. Sigalov. All right, well, thank you for joining me again. I first want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support. I truly appreciate it, especially with how much the dollar is worth at this point or how little it's becoming and how valuable it is to have in your pocket. Uh, we have Shell Pace at the $50 level. We have an anonymous family donor at $20.20 and $20.20. We have the Plandemic Reprimando at $17.76. And we have Ty, Charles, Tinfoil Stanley, Dr. Anna, who was a previous guest here, Frank, Brian, and we have the self-made Kevin level at $10. Uh, we have the refined not burned at $5. We have Linda, Emmy, Joe, Pat, and Bev, PJ, Rebecca, Marcus, Elizabeth, Dawn, Jennifer, Ken. We have the self-made $1.50 level with Frank. And then we have the Courage is Contagious level of $1. Amanda, Jay, Spesnasty, Darrell, Susan, BB King, who was also a previous guest, and Rick. All right, well, I want to uh, welcome our special guest. We have Matt Roski. Uh, now, he he knows a lot about a lot of things, but we're going to have him talk about electric culture today. And what does that term mean? And can you kind of explain what that means a bit? So electric culture, what it is, is it's the art of harnessing or harvesting the ether or energy or gone chi prana life force, whichever word you would like to call it. That's all around us so that we can boost our plants, boost, boost our gardens, you know, yield more food and have abundance. That's basically the short term of it. And how, do, how did you get into this field? What, what made you go this direction? So when I got into, the whole reason I got into electro, electroculture is I had an Akashic reading back in 2019. And the lady that I talked to, she told me that I should look into crop circles. And her whole reading was spot on for my entire life. Like everything that she told me was, it was so spot on. It was mind blowing. And we were on the, com we were on the telephone and she was 2,000 miles away. So I thought, okay, if she's correct about all of these things, then maybe she's going to be also correct about this topic. So then I started looking into it. She said, start looking into it. You'll just figure it out from there. Started looking at crop circles. And as I got into the work of crop circles and understanding that they're basically just Mother Earth talking to us, right? Like cymatics, like sound frequency emitting from the Earth to speak to us in a language of symbols and sacred geometry. So as I got into that, I started understanding things about pyramids, how pyramids work, you know, the frequencies that come from pyramids, the shape of pyramids. Uh, if you put pyramids in certain locations, certain plants that are extinct will come back to life because of the change that's occurring. There's a different type of spiral of the ether, which then basically invigorates life. So, you know, I started getting into that and understanding things related to that. I started reading the book Pyramid Power by Mary, Mary Hardy, which is a great book if anybody wants to get into books. And as I got into that, I got into a little bit of the work of Victor Schauberger, Justin Christo Flo, and George Lakofsky, right? Those are pretty much the three people who, you know, when it comes to electroculture, they were the ones who were at the forefront during the 1900s. Now, when you look at electroculture, it goes back all the way to the 1700s and probably before that as well, too, with the old world buildings and all the cathedrals and the antennas and all those things that used to be there. So you're, you're going back in time. But when I got into the work of Victor Schauberger and understanding everything that he was doing, it really kind of blew my mind, right? He was creating, if you look at his inventions of everything related to Vortex, he created the first flying saucer, right? If we look into flying saucers and his work, you can see that. He also understood that if you Vortex water, you can structure it. Right? If, if water is flowing in straight lines, it does not maintain its structure, and it actually becomes dehydrating to actually drink. So he understood all of that. And as I got into more of his work, because I was getting all his books and collecting them, because I was like, this guy is he's definitely something. He lives in the forest. He understands nature. All of these beautiful things. He started talking about the benefits of copper. And this is kind of where the electroculture thing kind of all started happening. And he started talking about the benefits of copper. Uh, if we use copper in our soil, we won't change the, the frequencies of our soil. We won't heat it up. You know, we won't have all this rust and decay from all the iron that we're using. And we'll have more food. And he researched this. He made different types of tools. He did all these things related to copper tools and copper plows, copper, even copper watering cans, right? Copper, diff all the, everything derived from copper. And when he started presenting this to the politicians at that time, 
you know, he got a lot of resistance. And the reason he got resistance is because a lot of these politicians were getting kickbacks from the fertilizer companies. So if all of this was presented and put forward, they wouldn't get the same amount of money that they were originally getting. So he said, let's do this. I'm going to make this, this, this bio plow, which was a really cool invention that he created. He goes, I'm going to make this and all these other tools for all the farmers. And, and let's do this so that we all have food abundance, right? So this is 1940s. So this is 1940s, 1950s, after the World War II reset, right? So he presented all of this and they, they shot it down. And after they shot it down and he decided not to play ball with them, they basically said, well, we're going to put out a broadcast. So they put out a broadcast on, onto the radio and onto basically the newspaper saying to farmers that if they use copper tools, they will yield too much food and not make enough money. And that's kind of when, when I read that one part in the book, you know, that I was going through and everything else, I sat and thought, all right, you know, I need to try this out. I need to test it. So I actually went and I got some copper and I got some wood and I made an antenna and put it in my Moringa plant and my Moringa plant went crazy. And then, so I made a video on just doing the exact same thing. And the electroculture movement has just pretty much kind of gone nuts since that video. But it blew my mind that just something so simple, right, as just applying a little bit of copper, a little antenna into your soil could grow. So, you know, your food could go, go wild. And then I thought, well, what happens if everybody started doing this, right? And as I got into other people who were doing it, like I said, even Justin Cristo Flo and George Lakovsky, you see that there was so much success with this, right? People were having more food, more pollinators, more birds, more bees, all these beautiful things. And it's just not talked about because, once again, it competes with our chemical farming system, right? The dependence on Monsanto and DuPont. And as we eliminate all of that, you know, we can all have abundance. So in a nutshell, this is basically how I got into electroculture. And then as I would read a book, I would go to the back of a book and kind of look at more books and try to, you know, go through things to kind of understand how all of this is working. That's interesting because I recently uh, read a book and I had a podcast on this. It was um, it was called Holistic. Uh, well, the book was called Holistic Management by Alan. Um, his last name is um, it's escaping me right now, uh, but it's about the regenerative farming. And one thing he says in in that book is um, that he found that there was some there was some uh, copper deficiency in some soil. And so he, you know, he, he wasn't into plowing. He was into non-plowing, but he noticed that there was a copper deficiency in the soil. So he put a copper wire behind the tractor as he was doing the planting with uh, sealed seed drilling. And that copper wire just dragging on the ground, put enough copper into the ground is what his, he claimed. Uh, but I wonder if it was more of what you're saying or if the truth is somewhere in the middle. So with that, you know, we have a lot of deficiencies of a lot of things, right? We use chemical farming, NPK, you know, it's basically three things. And that strips a lot of the nutrients and a lot of everything that's in there, right? All the quartz, all the, the energetic principles, everything. And copper is definitely one of the big ones, right? Because think of what copper does. It's very conductive, right? It increases uh, electrical conductivity. And what are we? We're conductive beams, right? We're one big quartz crystal that's conductive and then all of our plants are the same exact thing they have sap right blood of the plants that flow and everything is energy and electricity and conductivity and all of those things so when we start bringing that copper back in there the conductivity can flow when we're putting all this iron 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 what do we get a lot of rust a lot of decay right and a lot of slugs come around because they're trying to clean that up because they're they're copper based and they want to get rid of all the iron you know, so when we have all this stuff blocking all this stuff up in the soil and we're not having these nutrients, then things cannot flow energetically. And copper is a very big one on that. And there's a great book for people to look into called The Copper Revolution by Jason Hamill, where he basically explained about how that's one of the nutrients that we never get at all anymore. And it's pretty much responsible for like 70 different actions in our body. Right. So even just missing one nutrient from the soil, if you're missing that many actions from the body right now, imagine when you're missing 20 or 30. Right. Certain pathways all begin to turn off just because of the 
missing nutrient of just copper and then obviously other things as well. Right. And if if you think about it from more of a macro view, if if the ground doesn't have the copper in it, and then that means the plants don't have the copper they need, which means the animals that eat that don't get the copper, which means we don't get the copper we need or as much of as we need. Pretty much. Yeah, because it's all a circle, you know, and when we connect that, like you just said, that's what Victor Schauberger's work was about with, you know, replicating nature, understanding that if we work with nature and we keep the basis or the balance keep going, right, then everything works in harmony. But if we start removing one thing at a time and we have this uh, adapter to an adapter solution, right, then we can't fix anything because there's too many different pathways which need to be fixed. But each little thing adds to another. And, you know, for example, with copper, you start getting more birds, more bees, more pollinators, right? Because they can pick up on this. And then once you get, for example, more bees, you might get more butterflies, you might get more hummingbirds, right? Because it's all interconnected on an energetic principle, but also on if things are missing, things will not come around. And th- and other things might come around, like pests and things that are trying to clean up, but it's all one big circle of balance. Now, I, I've i never, I don't think there's, the property that I'm renting right now and living on, I don't think there's ever been any commercial farming ever in this area because it's it's desert, it's um, it's too hilly, there's a huge ravine right next to us. But I took a magnet, a really strong magnet, and just kind of drug it through the dirt, and the magnet was covered with with iron. Have you... Have you seen that the more iron causes more problems with trying to grow plants? So it depends on where you are, you know, and obviously if you're in Arizona, we got a ton of, we got a ton of, uh, you know, sand and silica going on as well. But as for the iron, that can be multiple different things, right? So one could be whatever's going up into the air is then falling down onto the soil, right? That can be one. Now there could have been whoever built on the land in which you're living on, there could be more iron. There also could be naturally occurring iron if it's very magnetic, right? Lots of magnetite or lodestones. That can actually be an area in which you might be living on. Now, what happens is is when you place the copper into the soil, you can actually balance out the iron. And that's what I've learned with pretty much all of this is that there's a balance of things. But when we have too much, for example, of just iron, 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 then there's no balance. So everything works in harmony. But simple, simple copper antennas can actually balance things out and start to bring back the, the structure of the of the areas in which have kind of been completely one-sided, either left or right. Can you explain how you make some of those copper antennas and the size of antenna f- for size of ground that it helps enhance? So with the antennas, what you're doing is you're taking a piece of wood from your backyard, right? So find a piece of wood that's in your backyard that And the reason I say that is because it's at the same frequency as you, right? Everything that's in your terrain or in your backyard is resonating at the same frequency as you. Now, if you are in Arizona, it's a little more challenging. You can maybe find some mesquite or you could find like a cactus that kind of has fallen over and you can use those if you want instead. You know, they're great, great conductors. That's for sure with all their little spikes on them. Um, But, you know, you want to find a piece of wood that's that's in your backyard. And then you want to take that piece of wood, get some copper, and then just wrap coils, right, around that piece of wood and have that coil point up towards the sky and then the other part of the coil down into the earth. And what you'll do is you'll take that antenna and you'll place that into your garden or into your raised bed or wherever you're deciding to grow food and you just let it do its thing. And what you're doing is you've created an atmospheric antenna that's gathering and also altering the ether that's spiraling the whole time. So, you know, when it comes to just making antennas, you can do them in multiple different ways as well, too, to enhance them. You can use things like quartz or you can use things like crystals and put them on top, right? So that this is another way to take your antenna to the next level. You'd place this, for example, the stone on top and wrap that stone with copper. And as that stone is squeezed, it creates a piezoelectric effect, which amplifies the energy. And then also the other fun part about the stone is that when the stone gets hit with the sunshine, it reflects a color spectrum onto your soil, right? So that's another thing that's missing in this factor is that the color spectrum is being altered, right? When we see that barrage go up in the sky and it's, you know, straight lines and whatever else, when you see that, right, that's 
altering the color spectrum that's coming down from the sun. And then so our plants can actually start to suffer if they're not getting the full spectrum. So one way would be just creating a simple wood with copper wrapped. Just a reminder for everyone out there, in duty uniform of the day, the full armor of God, let's all make courage more contagious than fear.